Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily update for February 23rd, 2021. I want to take up today the lingering effects of what we identified uh, for a very long time as the Achilles heel of the presidency of Donald Trump, and that was the economic policy. Now, many people cite elements of that as, as the strongest action that was done by Trump, uh, especially on the trade question, on the space program, uh, both of which are true. He did move against the free trade agreements. He did aggressively pursue a space program, which we're now seeing the first fruits of with the Mars mission of Perseverance. But there was one failure that has to be identified because this is a failure which is now set to explode the whole U.S. economy. And that is the failure to understand how a stock market bubble is not a sign of economic growth. Now, in saying this, let me remind you that in the 2016 campaign, President Trump, then candidate Trump, was absolutely clear on this. He correctly identified the fraud involved in Hillary Clinton claiming that Barack Obama's economic policy was a great recovery because of the appreciation of the stock market. Then candidate Trump correctly said that this is not a sign of economic growth. And he pointed to the fact that it's a stock bubble. Now, the problem is that his economic policies that he campaigned on in 2016 were never implemented. He called for reinstituting Glass-Steagall, which would have been extremely important to undercut the bubble by creating a commitment to a bankruptcy reorganization of companies, especially financial institutions, that were trading worthless instruments and making money on the appreciation of worthless instruments that add not, added nothing to the real economy, in fact, detracted from it. <coughs> Instead, because of the failure to get a Glass-Steagall re-regulation through, and equally importantly, a failure to get an infrastructure bill through, which he had pledged as part of his 2016 campaign, Trump was left with claiming that the stock market bubble, which was largely a result of the continuation of quantitative easing, of free money from the Federal Reserve to the speculative swindlers, to create an increased Ponzi scheme not just on Wall Street, but on overall debt appreciation, that this was a recovery. It was not. And we're seeing that this so-called everything bubble has now grown to the point where it's popping, uh, could lead to a total financial collapse, or if it continues, a hyperinflation rivaling that of Weimar Germany in the 1920s. Just a couple of aspects of this bubble. Global debt in 2020 was up by 7.5%. Total US debt, and this is the official figure, is up 11%, driven in large part by the federal balance sheet, the Federal Reserve balance sheet, which is now at $7.6 trillion. This is because the Federal Reserve is taking off the books of banks speculative financial instruments for which the real value is unknown, but is, it's greatly inflated. The Fed is now taking these in and providing new money to the banks, which they're using in many ways to feed a, a growing stock market bubble. Also, U.S. money supply grew by 26% in 2020. And now there are increasing number of warnings of a Weimar hyperinflation, including from Michael Burry, who was featured in the movie The Big Short. The stock market appreciation, and this is a figure which I think is worth looking at, uh, under President Trump, <coughs> excuse me, in four years, the stock market went up 67%. This is the Standard & Poor's Index. Under Obama, it was up 83%. Why was it that under Obama, President Trump correctly identified this as a fake recovery, and yet it was accepted by many of the supporters of Donald Trump as a real recovery when it occurred during his term. Now, a lot of this has to do with the fact that the president was sabotaged in his economic efforts by the likes of Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell, 
the Bush Republicans, the Wall Street Republicans, who colluded with Wall Street Democrats like Schumer and Pelosi in sabotaging aspects of his economic program. But nevertheless, we have to face this, especially since under Biden now, we're going to see a return on steroids to the economic policies of Obama, which will uh, put more hot air into the everything bubble, which will either lead to a hyperinflation or an overall collapse. Now, some of what's reported as economic recovery during the Trump years was based on corporations that are zombie corporations, which means they don't make enough profit to pay the interest on their debt, having access to free or cheap money from the Federal Reserve. So among other things, they bought their own stocks. They created a, a, a more incentive for people to put money in a stock market which is betting on companies which are technically bankrupt and issuing junk debt in order to keep their, their, uh, the appearance of being liquid. But keep in mind, liquidity and solvency are two different things. Having liquidity in the system does not mean it's solvent. And at some point, the debt bubble will pop. It will collapse. And whether it's a derivative debt, whether it's corporate debt, whether it's uh, government debt, uh, which is continuing to appreciate wildly, the one constant under Obama and under President Trump has been a decline in the real productive economy. And this is because we never resolved the direction of the last 40 years of neoliberalism, of moving to investment in uh, financialization, that is money betting on money, as opposed to investment in the real economy. And unless this is addressed, we're not going to have an economy that will be left. We're going to lose everything that remains that, that's vital and worthwhile of the U.S. economy. You want a proof of that? Look at what happened in Texas where neoliberal economics, deregulation, privatization, along with the Green New Deal, led to Texans freezing, including some freezing to death, while the companies, the corporations, were continuing to make profits. That's the future under the Great Reset and the Green New Deal. Now, with that said, let me just remind you that one of the other uh, uh, impediments that President Trump faced was the constant threat from Russiagate, <clears throat> the lies coming from Democrats, from the media, from Republicans like Rubio and Cruz and Fox News, who continued to insist that Russia was involved in an attack on the United States. The effect of this is that we have the worst relationships ever with Russia, despite President Trump's efforts to form mutually cooperative relationships with Putin and Russia. <clears throat> and at the same time, we, we have the continued polarization around the fraud of Russiagate. Now, all you have to do is look at the results of the second impeachment, which was a completely fraudulent uh, attack on President Trump, but also the continuing attempt to make this about Putin and corruption of the Republican Party and Trump. And you see why this must be addressed. Now, the failure here was that we never had the Russiagate documents publicly released. The president tried to declassify them. It was sabotaged by the CIA, by the FBI. But the people working with President Trump never forced it through. And as a result, the corruption of the criminal cabal that targeted Trump and his supporters continues with the censorship today of the big tech and with the attempt to criminalize those people who challenge the vote count on November 3rd. Now, most importantly, let me just bring up the case of Roger Stone. You know, the media is now insisting that Roger Stone played a leading role in the attack on the Capitol on January 6th. And Roger has put out a press release in which he makes clear that he was not involved in this. He was not there on the scene on January 6th. He was in a hotel 
and that this is a continuation of the lying attack of him on him from the Mueller case. And it, Roger makes the point, which still has not sunk in to people like Pelosi and Hillary Clinton and others, that Mueller never found any evidence of Russia meddling in the election or Trump collusion with that or Roger Stone's involvement with WikiLeaks or Russia in the release of documents exposing the Hillary Clinton campaign is engaging in dirty tactics against Bernie Sanders. In fact, on November 3rd, the Justice Department released documents showing that there was no evidence that Roger had been involved with WikiLeaks or so-called Russians. And yet we still see Pelosi and Hillary Clinton talking about the Russians, claiming uh, Hillary Clinton asking was President Trump on the phone with Putin during the January 6th riot. And Pelosi saying, reminding Hillary that as she always said, with Trump, all roads lead to Putin. Now they're talking about a bipartisan commission to investigate January 6th. Well, where's the commission to investigate Russiagate? Why has that not come to fruition? What happened to the Durham report? What happened to the investigation of Comey and Clapper and Brennan and the liars from the Obama intelligence community who colluded with British intelligence to sabotage the Trump administration? So while I'm pointing out that President Trump had some real failures, in particular in dealing with the economy, dealing with the neoliberalism that continues, that we saw exposed in the Texas case and we're seeing exposed in the financial bubble. At the same time, the draining of the swamp, the cleaning out of the neoconservatives still remains to be done. This is the unfinished business that must be taken up by the American people. If we're going to return our nation to the real tradition of the American system as developed by the American system premier economist, Lyndon LaRouche, who took the ideas of the founding fathers of Washington and Franklin and Hamilton and brought them into a modern uh, context with his four laws. So thank you for joining me and I'll be back again tomorrow.